Hey everyone, welcome. Today we are going to talk about how to conduct a pestle analysis. Of course, before we can do that, we first need to define exactly what is a pestle analysis. So let me ask you this. Do you have a product or a service that you've ever thought of offering abroad internationally? If so, then a pestle analysis is a great tool for you. This is a tool that examines the macro environmental factors that can strongly influence an organization's chances for success in a given country or region. Now, of course, PESTL, as you can probably imagine, is an acronym. The macro environmental factors that we're looking at are political, economic, social, technological, legal, and environmental. Now, a pestle analysis is especially useful when starting a new business or entering a foreign market. It presses the researcher to look past the glitz and glamour of the idea of expanding internationally and instead delve deeply into the viability of entering a given foreign market, looking at the question through cold, hard data and research. After all, the idea of going international is pretty darn cool, so we need to make sure that we're not seduced by the idea alone. Now, in this video, I am going to go through each aspect of the pestle analysis. And throughout the video, I will be using an actual pestle analysis that I created as an example. So that way you can kind of see how this all comes together. So as you can see, my pestle analysis explores the possibility of expanding nutshell brainery into the Philippines. And I begin my analysis by making some general justifications around why the Philippines may be a viable option for the company. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. The first part of the pestle analysis, of course, is political. This section of your pestle analysis examines the political climate of whatever country you're researching. Now, here are a few questions that you will want to consider when doing your pestle. Now, a quick note, when I offer up these questions, this does not mean that every single one of these questions needs to be answered. It all depends on the product or service that you're taking to where. So some of these questions will be more germane than others. Okay, so with that caveat, let's look at political questions. You'll want to look at the country's political system and philosophy. You'll want to ask how stable is the country's political system? And to what degree does this political system embrace foreign entrance into their markets? Now, here are some resources that can help you get started. Of course, depending on the country and the product or service that you're taking overseas or abroad, I should say, you will want to do your own research to study more about the specifics of the country and your product or service. That said, these resources can get you started. We're looking at things like the CIA World Factbook, United Nations Development Program, the Economic Economy, Political Stability, Country Rankings. Go ahead and Google these things and you will find a wealth of information. Now here's the political section for my own pestle analysis. The first thing I do is provide an overview of the country's political system. Now this is a very high level view, a macro view, just to give some background to the political system in the Philippines. However, I then follow up with a regarding nutshell brainery section. This is where I take things down to a more granular level. I want to look at the things that really affect this company and this product or service at a micro level. So, for example, I'm looking at education and the number of private versus public institutions and things like this. These are things that really matter to Nutshell Brainery in terms of the politics practiced in the Philippines. And so I want to make sure that I cover that. Now, I do this in every section, incidentally. So, for example, in economic, I provide an economic overview of the country. And then I get down to a more micro granular level for nutshell brainery. 
This is where I'm looking at things like how much money does ad revenue from the Philippines generate in YouTube and things of that nature. So once again, for each section, you will want to provide an overview where you look at things from a high level and then work down to the more granular level, things that affect your company, your product, and your service specifically. Next, we want to look at the economic environment. And this one is going to be a fairly in-depth section because after all, we're talking about offering a product or service in a foreign market. There has to be an economic reason behind this. So potential questions that you'll want to ask are, what is the country's economic system and philosophy? What are the country's monetary policies? What is the country's regional economic integration position? What is the country's economic climate for innovation? What is the country's economic country attractiveness? What are the country's competition policies? What is the country's labor availability? What are the country's trade philosophy and practices? What is the country's foreign direct investment climate? And what is the country's import-export climate? Now, once again, you will not have to answer every one of these questions. It all depends on your product, service, and the country. So, for example, if you are not planning to export, you're going to go ahead and build whatever you're building in the country. You don't really care about what their export climate is. On the other hand, you will care about labor availability. However, if you are then just exporting and you're building everything, say, in the U.S., well, then labor availability doesn't really apply to you. So you get the idea. Now, once again, there are some great resources that you can look at to start your search on the economic side. It just so happens that the first three are the same ones that you look at for political, so that's handy. You can also look at the International Monetary Fund, Index of Economic Freedom, and the World Bank Doing Business page. And then there's the International Trade Administration, World Trade Organization, and Office of United States Trade Representative. And finally, the FDI, that's Foreign Direct Investment Confidence Index, and export.gov. These are great places to start your research. Next, we have social. Now, like economic, social is going to be a rather large section because ultimately you are selling your product or service to people and people are made up of their social constructs. So you need to really take the time to understand how your market ticks. Questions that you'll want to ask are things like, what is the country's social structure? What are the country's religious and social influences? What are the country's customs and traditions? What are the country's customer tastes and lifestyle? And where does the country society sit in Hofstede's framework? Once again, we have some great resources here that you can go ahead and take a look at to begin your research. I especially like Hofstede's insights. That will give you some really good, well, insights into the values in these respective cultures. Next, we have technological. We want to look at the technological factors in the country. Things like what is the country's technological infrastructure? And what are the country's production and distribution capabilities? And where does the country stand in terms of digital transformation? These are just a few of the questions that you will want to ask and explore to get started. Once again, we have some great resources here. Dell's Digital Transformation Progress Report is pretty fascinating, as well as the Network Readiness Index. Go ahead and Google these and you can start your search there. Then we have legal. What is the country's legal and regulatory climate? And what is the country's ethical climate? This is really important if you're going to do business in a foreign country. You really want to make sure that you are protected legally, both you, your assets, your profits, and all of that. 
And once again, we have a list of resources you can use to start your research. These are the same resources that we've explored in other sections, so once again, that's pretty handy. Now, the last part of the pestle is environmental. We want to look at the environmental aspects of whatever country we're researching. So, what are the country's environmental policies and practices, and how does the country rank in terms of sustainable development? And of course, we have a couple of resources here you can use to begin your research. Now, the last part of the pestle analysis is your recommendations. Now, I want to be really clear here. A good pestle analysis is simply that, an analysis. You are not trying to force a yes, let's go global answer if that is not the answer. Even if your recommendation is, no, we totally should not move into this country, then that is still a solid pestle analysis. You also want to include your strategies, your generic strategies, value discipline strategies, grand strategies, and international strategies. Now, you may say, well, golly gee willikers, if I am not recommending that we go to this country and do business there, why would I include strategies? Because the strategies help support your position. For example, you can say doing business in this given country would require us to follow this grand strategy, and we are not well positioned to do this. Therefore, we should hold back on doing business there. So you see here in the recommendations for my own pestle analysis, I do not recommend that Nutshell Brainery expand into the Philippines at this time. It's just not the right direction to go. Now, one of the ways that I make this justification is by exploring the strategies, the generic strategies, the value discipline, the grand strategies, international, and so on and so forth. So, for instance, in the value discipline strategy, were I to go into the Philippines, I would follow customer intimacy. However, while customer intimacy works well for me here in the U.S., I lack the insights necessary to replicate that same success and strategy in the Philippines. So, in this way, I'm using the strategy to justify my recommendation not to go into the Philippines at this time. Now, if your recommendation is to go into the country, then obviously you would use the strategies to show that you are in a great position to execute these strategies in that particular country. Now, of course, you've done a lot of research for your pestle analysis, so you want to make sure that you include all your sources here in the references section. And there you go. You now have everything you need to put together a nice, solid pestle analysis. So get to it, have fun, and see where your research takes you. All right? Hey, thanks a lot for joining, and until we talk again, have a fantastic day. Hey, thanks a lot for watching this video. And well, if you're still here, you're a special kind of awesome. There are other ways that you can support this channel that we would like to invite you to consider. For example, we have accounts at both Patreon and YouTube community. They offer a variety of benefits. It's the very same benefits at the same price levels. So whichever platform you prefer, whether Patreon or YouTube community, we invite you to take a look at what's waiting there for you. What else do we have? We also have merch. I know, right? Every YouTube channel, it's like we're federally mandated to offer merch. Well, we offer merch as well. But in addition to hats and coats and things like that, we also offer study materials such as case studies and articles and study guides or even PowerPoint presentations. These are things that you can use in your own lectures or in your own personal or professional studies. We also have an Amazon affiliate link. It's in the description below. And like any other affiliate link, it doesn't cost you a penny more to order through this link. However, it really helps the channel. 
Furthermore, we also have a newsletter called the Brainery Bulletin, and we would love to have you subscribe. In this bulletin, I have a variety of, well, behind the scenes pictures and updates, things that I'm working on that you can look forward to seeing in your queue here soon. I also offer a variety of live stream workshops to all of my subscribers, so take a look at that. And then finally, if you like Nutshell Brainery, you'll love our podcasts as well. Once again, links in the description, so take a look and we would love to have you as our newest listener. All right, thanks again, and this time, for real, until we talk again, have a fantastic day.